Chapter 8, Company Train. First objective, identify considerations for determining training needs. Training needs can come from many different places. As a company officer, it's your job to understanding where these needs come from and how to administer it. So you have obviously needs of the organization and you have considerations such as legally mandated training, performance during emergency operations, annual refresher or recertification requirements, post incident analysis reports, personnel evaluation reports, change in an operational procedure, compliance with individual personal development plans, implementation of new equipment and changes in the type of service that the organization delivers, as well as job task analysis. These are all things to consider when planning out and preparing for your training evolutions. Next, let's look at the four-step method of instruction. Now, I do apologize that uh, the slide didn't come in through, but the four-step method of instruction, the first step is preparation. And in preparation, that function includes topics, uh, introduce topics, gain your students' attention, state clearly your learning objectives, and identify how the students will be evaluated. This includes the instructor self preparation, such as reviewing lesson plans, reading the appropriate material and gathering the appropriate equipment and stuff that needs to be assembled, such as AV equipment, training aids and props. And of course, practice the skill that will be taught. Step two, you have the presentation phase. That function basically is presenting information using orderly sequential outline. It identifies teaching methods appropriate for the students and learning styles at the topics being taught. This can be combined with step three, the actual application. So is it more of a hands-on function and let's instruct as we go through, or do you instruct first and then do hands-on? Your available choices in disseminating information can be lecture, illustrated lecture, discussion, demonstration, and various other learning activities. In step three, you have the application. Functionally speaking, this provides an opportunity for learning through activities, exercise, discussions, work groups, skill practice, and practical training evolutions. The purpose here is to reinforce the student's learning. This is the most critical step, as most learning takes place during this step. Finally, you have evaluation, which measures how much the student learns through written, oral, or practical examination. This determines how well the student performs a skill or evaluation and provides students with feedback to assist in improving the skill. It also determines whether or not the students have achieved learning objectives or course outcomes. This can be based on observation of individual skills and training evolutions unless the training division examination is provided. Company officers should be prepared to alter lesson plans to meet organizational specific conditions without altering the four-step method of instructions. Learning Objective 3. Recognize the use of lesson plans in company level training. Lesson plans are basic to all teaching. Essentially, it is a roadmap that guides the instructors through the topics. It's used to deliver the required training of all types. You must be familiar with the components, so review the lesson plans and clarify points not understood with appropriate authorities. Planning the topic and how much to teach is a prelude to instruction. It helps the company officer to carefully think about what to teach and how to teach it. 
never begin a training session without a plan that describes what is going to be taught and how it will be taught. Adapting lesson plans may be necessary if time is not available to present the lesson completely or maybe you have some sort of weather type event. In any case, you need to divide the topic in smaller sections, create a brief review for each topic, and require audiovisual aids not available is another issue. So lesson plans outdated or do not accurately represent current processes or policies could be another issue. So you may have to adapt your lesson plan to that as well. You may have an issue where your students may not be responding to the teaching method you're currently using. So you may have to quote back up and pun and try a different teaching method or provide a better learning experience through enhancements such as different audiovisual aids or maybe making a hands-on type presentation instead. Or maybe some sort of field trip. So now let's look at objective four. Describe the methods of company level training. And I do want you to bear in mind guys that this is just a brief overview and you should be getting instructor one out of the deal uh, through another class. So this training is not intended to make you a, a ready to make uh, instructor. So let's look at demonstration. This is the act of showing how to do something or how something operates. It is a basic means for teaching psychomotor skills, also known as manipulative skills. It has physical principles and mechanical functions also are a great way to demonstrate. It can be effective to show the operations of various tools, equipment, apparatus, and material. This should show the results of their use. During demonstration, this may include personnel with training and specialized skills, and this can be used in involving subordinates to teach certain processes. It provides subordinates with teaching skills and experiences. So this is a good way for your people underneath you to kind of step up and teach a skill that they may have an expertise in. After you teach somebody the basics of doing a skill or a set of skills, then you can probably combine them into some sort of practical training evolution. This should be conducted in accordance with applicable federal, state, and NFPA standards. This reinforces skills learning during the formal training. This helps company personnel work together. You can also use multi-company evolutions during this. This is an opportunity for various personnel and units to train together for a potential joint operation. It should include all units within an assigned response area. These evolutions should be monitored by several individuals, such as instructors, safety officer, and quite possibly chief officers. They should involve small numbers of units. When you pick out your training location, it should enhance the learning experience and should reflect actual locations and emergency conditions whenever possible. This must be planned based on established criteria to ensure realism and maintain personnel safety. It must be creative in order to develop a realistic learning environment. However, you need to make sure that you do it safely. Simple evolutions involve small groups performing single tasks that require only a few skills. Some examples could be lifting and setting ground ladders, performing search and rescue techniques, or taking and recording vital signs. Maybe driving and parking fire apparatus or, develop, or deploying and advancing attack hose lines. To begin, the company officer should explain the learning objectives. Then, demonstrate the evolution, and then three, relates evolution to the classroom presentation, and then finally, emphasize safety requirements for 
the evolution. Note, if the evolution involves more than one participant, the demonstration may require the use of an experienced group of responders to perform it for the group. When these evolutions are going, they should be monitored. If it's a new skill, stop and correct immediately the wrong action. If it's an existing skill, allow the students to problem solve and self-correct. If there are safety infractions, they must always be corrected immediately. Company officers should immediately stop the exercise if an injury occurs or seems imminent. In the case of weak or erroneous performance, the company officer should evaluate the impact of interrupting the exercise prior to completion. Complex evolutions may involve multiple units, agencies, and jurisdictions in scenarios that require high levels of cooperation and coordination. They may include the company officer in planning and participation. Some examples could be structured fires and urban search and rescue incidences, quite possibly mass casualty incidences or hazardous material. They should all include NIMS and ICS components. That way it helps ensure safety and accountability of participants. There can be many locations used for training evolutions at the company officer level. The most obvious can be at the station, in the bay, in a classroom, or a parking lot or driveway. Ideal for training with equipment such as fire hoses, portable extinguishers, and ground letters. They require caution to prevent damage to the station or inconveniencing the public. This should include monitoring of weather to ensure that weather does not increase the risk to participants, citizens, and exposures. You may go off-site to a remote training site, and those vary widely depending on the jurisdiction. List of able sites should include the name of owner or representative, access such as availability, water supply sources, and possible types of training. So this may be going to say uh, county or city owned building where you can conduct certain training evolutions such as maybe laddering a building or doing high angle rescue. At the company level you should coordinate all training with the training division. You should have written permission to use private property and potential sites of training could include any of the following. And it doesn't all have to be hands-on stuff. For example, if you're doing building construction familiarization, you could look at subdivisions under construction or structures under demolition to get a better idea of the individuals or the structures in an individual's response area. Abandoned or condemned buildings can also be used, as well as industrial sites. But I cannot stress it enough no matter which of these sites you use make sure that you do it safely company officers must not attempt a live burn training exercise without approval from the administration in the training division they should adhere to the requirements of nfpa 1500 and nfpa 1403 there are a lot of hoops to jump through when doing live fire training. Don't attempt this unless you are a qualified professional and have plenty of coordination and help. Planning factors. Obviously, I've said safety should be up front, but this should also be balanced with realism. Obviously, the more real you make it, the more they would learn. But at some point, then they're not going to be learning and you're going to be endangering the student. So you should always take and proceed cautiously. Make sure that everybody is wearing proper PPE. This must be a key component in planning the evolution. This cannot be overemphasized in planning. 
it is never acceptable to sustain injuries during training evolutions. Look at the objectives. They must be met by the end of the evolution. Define through creation of a lesson plan how to meet those objectives. Look at justifications. The training must meet learning objectives, cost benefit, legal requirements, and positive community perception. You should also consider allotment of resources and other such criteria. Supervision. This must be supervised by the company officer and or personnel with appropriate training and experience. Large evolutions may require more supervision. And this goes back to looking at your span of control. In NMPA 1403, during live fire training evolutions, they recommend a student to teach a ratio of one to five. Resource and logistics. Plans must provide that all resources needed to perform the task and complete evolutions. Especially critical for evolutions at remote sites. If it's a remote site and you didn't bring it, you probably don't have it. Look at your requirements. Do you have adequate water? Do you have the appropriate apparatus and tools? Have you set up rest and rehabilitation? Do you have sufficient time to complete the evolution? Weather. Look at your weather. Will it create a distraction or safety hazard? Do you need to alter the plans? Do you have alternate ideas for plans for inclement weather? Look at legal requirements. Considerations such as laws, regulations, and standards that require training and those that limit constraints or prohibit certain evolutions. Always make sure you use NIMS and ICS components, such as an incident action plan. Those are great ways to monitor and track your evolution. Think about your exposures, especially when you're doing live fire training. Smoke, embers, water, and other residues can infect the neighboring properties. Evaluations and critiques. You should plan appropriate time and opportunity for company officers and participants to evaluate the evolution and their performance. Assist students with attaining proficiency and addressing weakness during this phase. It assists the training division in determining the effectiveness of a particular evolution and analyzing kind of the instruction pattern, what needs to be changed. Always look for ways to improve things. It does provide critique and a process model for all participants when they are involved in emergency incident critiques. Apply these guidelines when planning a practical evolution and establishing learning objectives. Give each participant the opportunity to have input and an influence on final learning outcomes based on the established learning objectives. Do not assign too many participants to a specific task. Keep the participants busy and an elimination of or greatly reduce the amount of standing around. You let firemen stand around too long and they're going to get themselves or other people in trouble. Provide a safe staging area for students and observe areas for non-participants. Always maintain your student to instructor ratio. Ensure that training participants have the necessary prerequisite knowledge prior to doing practical evolutions. Design evolution so that positive outcome is possible. If impossible or very difficult, the task has limited learning experience. Provide a summary of what was learned and what can be carried into operational environment and actual emergency settings. Discuss the scenario as it results. It's always a great idea to videotape an evolution impossible. That way it can be used for critique and further visual aids in teaching other classes. And always, always, always document. If you didn't document, you didn't do it. You should include times, topics, participants, and results as a minimum in your documentation.
Company officers are essential for meeting the company training goals. Company level training builds teamwork and ensures safety in effective operations. Officer evaluation skills during training drills are used observation to provide feedback on performance. Officers also promote teamwork, leadership, and resourcefulness and pride to ensure safety and efficient operations. Even though you may have a training division or group of folks, they're going to put a lot of company level training on you as the officer, and it is up to you to administer the training safely and appropriately. All right, gang, if you have any questions, you can email me at aroberts at athenstech.edu or give me a call in the office. Until next time, be safe and have a wonderful day.